Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome as we come together on this Lord's Day. And isn't it fitting that on All Saints Day, the saints would be in the church, amen? amen? Or online or wherever, but God's saints are all over the place. We just want to celebrate God's love for us, that he's the one who changed us and molds us to be who he created us to be. Let's stand together as we worship today, as we lift up God's name, as we give him all the praise, honor, and glory. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. All right, good morning. I want you to turn to somebody to your left, to your right, and welcome them. And if you are watching from home, we also want to welcome you for joining us here. All right. We had such a wonderful evening last night, and I want to say thank you if you donated candy, if you donated a trunk, if you came to help out in any way. We had a lot of people that was um, in the background um, that were helping, and we are so thankful for you. You made it um, happen, and you know, it takes a lot of hands to make an event like that uh, occur, and we had well over a thousand people that came through our lines, which was amazing, and so we're just so grateful for that, and so thank you. And um, so I have somebody that, that is here that I want to um, ask to come forward. And so, and her mom or dad, and can I have Cam a Cambria? Is there a Cambria in this house? <clears throat> right there, can she come up with her mom or her dad to come on up here, please? I know she's really not sure what's going on. All right. So we did a drawing for a girl's bike, a boy's bike, and a pizza. And Cambria oh, oh, oh. won the bicycle. That's your bicycle, honey. It's a really big bike, but wow, isn't that so pretty? All right. Is that pretty cool? <laughs> yeah. She's inspecting it. All right. So can you turn around? They want to take your picture. Turn around in front of your bicycle. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And Pastor John will take the bike to the back for y'all. 
Oh, all right. She wants to write it out. <laughs> all right. I wanted you all to get to share in that. So we have a couple winners um, for the pizza and the boys' bike, and we'll be contacting them today. So, all right. Well, if you have a birthday or anniversary in the month of November, we want to invite you to come forward, please. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> Just you. All right, birthday or anniversary in the month of November. Come forward. All right, Arnie, come on up. <laughs> oh. All right, and my daughter isn't here, and her birthday is this month. So happy birthday, Savannah. All right, so if you can tell us when your birthday is or anniversary, which, whichever it is, and um, your name, because we all don't know who you are. Thank God. <laughs> uh, my birthday is on the 14th of November. I'll be 24. <laughs> my name is Arnie Mahan. <laughs> You're not going to let go, are you? <laughs> my name's Arnie, and my birthday's on the 4th, too. <laughs> you too. Why you start here? <laughs> it's Dawn, and I'm going to be 29. Okay, all right. <laughs> Happy birthday. When is your birthday? Fourth. The 4th. The 4th, all right. Okay, I'm Margaret. My birthday's the 16th, and I'm 71, but I'd rather be 17. All right. <laughs> Me. Hi, I'm Lacey Grove. My birthday is on November 6th and yes. I'll, same one. 27. <laughs> 27. That's what happens, huh? I'm Amanda and my birthday is the 23rd and I'll be 36. All right, wonderful. All right. Well, I wanted to stand up here. His daddy has a birthday, November 6th. Your daddy? What's your yeah. daddy's name? Um, I don't know. Daddy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's sing to them. All right. If you weren't here last night, it was such a great time. All those kiddos that came through, and there were 16 trunks, and they were decorated awesomely. Do we know? Was there a contest? Do we know who won the contest? Nobody knows? Adele might, might have won it. There were some really impressive um, trunks last night. So I'm here as your ministry coordinator, and I wanted you to know that after church today, we're having a meeting with the ministry leaders, and after that, those leaders will have a list of all the names of you who signed up to be involved in that ministry. So before the month is over, you'll be hearing from somebody if you um, signed up for a ministry. So don't think you've been forgotten. You will be contacted within the month. Thank you. Okay, um, in your bulletins there is a postcard size for um, a pie, an apple pie. Our ministry team that is going to Puerto Rico next June is doing a, fund a fundraiser making apple pies for your holidays this year. Um, I left off the dates because I wasn't thinking, and as I looked over it earlier, I was like, oh my gosh. So I think the deadline is the 14th of November, for pickup or delivery on the 21st. So if you would like a pie, please put your name and phone number down and how many you would like. Please turn them in to either Christy Longoria or Wendy Lopez. Thank you very much. Lots of exciting things going on. We are so glad that you're here this morning with us. 
<clears throat> Today is November 1st, Thanksgiving month. And one thing I like to do on my Facebook is each, each day I try to put uh, something I'm thankful for. So whether you do Facebook or you just do it at your own home, I want to encourage you, this month, count your blessings. Each day, whether in our home, we're going to have a Thanksgiving jar, and the girls are going to, and all of us are going to write something that we're thankful for. So this month, let's just really focus on our blessings. 2020 has been a different year than we ever could have imagined, but there's been so many blessings. So let's just encourage each other this month to just to count those blessings of how, what God's doing great in our life. Um, so some other announcements. We are getting really close to our Christmas fair. This is where the children earn dollars and they get to buy presents for their family. Um, if they don't get to buy anything for themselves. They have to think about others. It's a great day. Um, but we need some new and gently used items. They're starting to come in. So thank you for those of you who have brought them. Um, we need more. We also end up, they end up buying several hundred gifts that all together and we have to wrap them all in about an hour's time. So if you are willing to help on that day, it takes a lot of adults on this event. Um, it's the second Saturday of December. So if you are available to help with that, there is a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center. Um, so that's one thing coming up. The other thing is we had our first sweet sensations at our house with some people coming over for dessert. It was such a great time. Our second one will be this coming Sunday, November 8th. So if there's all those sign-up sheets on those are also at the Welcome Center. We look forward to having you. Um, and in our family, we also have something really special happening in just about um, a little over a week and a half, and that is um, Elena and Yadi will be our daughters officially, and so we are celebrating that. We have a drop-in reception at our house, so if you'd like to, um, there's a little announcement. We just want to invite our church family to come in to welcome them into the family. Um, all right, I think that's all I was supposed to announce. Let me just double-check real quick. Tonight is our last prayer walk tonight, so please come out as we as we pray and walk. Um, five o'clock, and that's on at the track. So, all right, thank you. Anyone? Did you did you remember yours? What's that? It doesn't have it doesn't have to be the last. That's a good point. So, all right, you remember now? I do. All right. All right. Uh, on a side note. Some of us were here all night with teenagers, so if you hear snoring, check the teenager section and uh, possibly the sound booth, uh, maybe even the drums. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so Veterans Day is coming up. Um, I am looking for information on any family members who are possibly actively serving or who have served. Um, I need um, their name their rank if you know it, what branch they served, and uh, the time that they served if you know that. Um, go ahead and get that to me, either uh, jot it down on a piece of paper and turn it into me or uh, send it to an email to uh, office at PayNAS. Um, please get those into me by November 11th. That is, happens to be Veterans Day. Um, but we're going to do something special for the veterans the following Sunday, which I believe is the 15th. Yep, okay. All right, um, one other thing. Um, I know that uh, we've been talking about uh, the directories and stuff, and there was a Facebook post about filling out a directory page. And I have some people going, why do I need to do that? Well, I tried to send out a mass email to most of the congregation. I have about 120 emails that uh, people have given me, but about 40 of those are no good. So what ends up happening, and it shouldn't happen, but it does happen, is... I start getting messages back saying failed, 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 failed. Well, then the junk filter kicks in and says, wait a second, they don't know that these emails are good, and so it stops all of the good emails from going out as well. I need updated contact information. So even if you think your information is correct, please fill out a directory form or go to the website. Um, go to the Facebook page. There's that um, link on there. I'll even repost it so we can get it out so that I can get updated information. Um, I have a lot of people asking for updated directories, and I can't do it until I get those pages filled out, please. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, we are doing a ladies' paint night on November 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, if you guys could sign up, we're gonna have this book back by the coffee bar in the foyer. 
So if you could please sign up for that. You do have to provide your own canvas. Uh, any size works, but I would say 16 by 20 is a good size. And I believe the cost is gonna be $10 per person and any extra to cover supplies and any extra is gonna go to be donated to the women's ministries. And I'll be your teacher, we're painting pumpkins. All right. Great. All right, just a couple more. One is, I uh, just wanna once again, uh, thank all of you on behalf of the, myself and the pastoral staff for the love and cards and letters and prayers and just the great outpouring of love you, give, you gave to us uh, for pastor appreciation. You are amazing. It is such a blessing to be a part of, of this family and to join together in this way. And so thank you once again for, the, for all that you do and continue to do in and through us, all right? And also, I want to let you know, um, yeah, we still aren't passing the plates with stuff, but just want to remind you that our tithe and offerings, we have a little church back there right in front of the sound booth. Uh, if you want to drop those in there. If you're online, you can mail it into the church, 1987th Avenue North, and uh, we'll get that and get that put in. You've been so faithful, uh, and we, I keep having people, where are we going to do the offering? I said, well, I'm a little hesitant to have people in masks walking around with the plates going, give us your money. So, <laughs> so, you know, I guess that gives new meaning to taking the offering. So, all right, but, but in, until we get through this, we, we got, just a reminder, we got that church back there and things have been going great, but thank you so much. All right, at this time, we want to dismiss the kids. What? Oh, one last thing. Oh. I don't usually sit right there. Really? No. <laughs> okay, so like Pam said, tonight is our last um, Pray for Our Nation walk. If you have not come out yet to join us at the track, I really want to encourage you to come out tonight. You don't even have to walk. You can just sit there and pray with us. And Pastor Tim's going to bring his trumpet tonight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to blow the trumpet at the end of the walk. Um, so yeah, so I just want to encourage you guys to come out. Um, we do have... A big election coming up and it's not even necessarily about who is in office but it's about God's will over our nation and praying that whatever God's will is, is that we accept that and live under that so please come out we've had a great turnout um, if it's cold just bundle up and once you're walking you do get warm also um, for the women's fellowship this pink little book is going to be kind of like our line of communication. So when we do have events to sign up for, like Lacey said, I'm going to have this back maybe by the coffee bar. It might move. I don't know. Um, so we're going to sign up through here. Also, I was thinking, you know, in the back, the very back, if you have like a prayer request or something that you want to put up for the Women's Fellowship, just put that there. So this can be like our line of communication. All right. And last but certainly not least, this Wednesday is our food distribution here at the church. Uh, we start handing out food at 10 o'clock. So Vicki asks that if you want to help out, try to be here by 845 so we can make sure everything is lined out and everybody's in place. And this is going to be an even bigger one because not only do we have the food coming from the Idaho Food Bank, but we also had a, a contribution from farmers to families of another, I think, four boxes per family uh, that we're going to be handing out. So if you're interested in helping out, it's a tremendous time. Uh, we give out to like 300 families, and uh, which is, uh, I think last month was almost 1,000 people uh, that we are impacting. And we're still continuing to have uh, people give in and come in throughout the week as well. And also, uh, you'll notice on in your bulletin, there's for Christmas food boxes uh, that we are we're putting together um, we've been asked to head that up as a church and through our food bank and so there's a list of items that are needed there and so if you can uh, be looking at that praying about it and if you have any questions talk to Vicki and uh, she would be happy to give you more information all right well, I believe our kids are dismissed at this time for kids church and for kinder church we're going to continue to worship in here as we continue to seek God So in John 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's teaching them. Let's read this together as we have this. He says, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father 
and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Isn't it good to know that Jesus loves us, that he cares about us, and that, and that he can give us peace, true peace? And in the midst of our world today, with all of the, all the craziness and all the different things that bring out the problems and stress and anxiety and everything, Jesus is here saying, I'm here to give you peace and it's all because he loves us. And it's only natural for us to turn around and say, well, in light of how much you love us and what you've done, it's only natural for us to say back to him, we love you too. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's stand as we give praise to God, as we sing about our love for him, as we thank him for what he's doing in and through us. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because He first loved me.
Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be your name When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. Choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, oh, oh, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, Jesus. blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. God, we thank you so much for being with us. You are worthy of our praise and our honor and our glory, for you are the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth. You are our Savior, you are our Redeemer, you are our Restorer. You're the one who's changing us to become more and more like Jesus, to be the people you created us to be. And God, we thank you for this opportunity to come to worship, to celebrate you, to hear from you what you have for us, to let you work in us and through us. And so, God, we open up our hearts, we open up our minds to you, and we pray that you would teach us, you'd help us to grow, and that, God, you'd be honored and glorified in and through our lives. For we do love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Well, if you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn to Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. As we're continuing our journey, joining with the disciples as at the beginning in verse 1 of chapter 11, as they came to Jesus and said, Lord, would you teach us to pray? Teach us to pray. We want to know how to pray like you pray. We want to know how to, be, to do this. And, and as we've been looking, as we've been looking through the Lord's Prayer, not just here, but over in Matthew chapter 6, we found that, that in the first couple of verses where he says, Our Father who art in heaven... Hallowed be your name, 
your kingdom come, your will be done. Right? And, and in this, we're getting this accurate view of who God is and what he desires of us and of the world. That, that we would see him as our father, not just a father, but as our daddy. Because he loves us so much and he cares about us and he wants to be intimately involved in our lives. But he is our father who is in the heavens. He is he's above and over all and he is, he is the almighty God. And in that we can know that as our daddy, he can watch over us, he can protect us, he can provide for us. He is able to do anything and everything we need. And so we can trust him to not only be that one who loves, but the one who can truly take care of us. And because he's our daddy, because he loves us so much, we want to make sure that he's, his name is honored in our lives in, and, and through our lives. As we live our lives out, that people see what he's doing in and through us, and they go, wow, God must be a good God. He must be someone that I could be interested in being a part of and having a relationship with. And that God desires that, that his kingdom would come to earth and his will would be done. You know, just here, just like it is in heaven, that, that he'd be in charge, he'd be in control. And that we understand that the kingdom is about, is, is not really a physical thing, but it's where he dwells and where he lives and where he's in charge. That, that his kingdom is made up of people. People like you, people like me. Where he lives in our hearts and, and he helps us and he leads us and he guides us. And that he teaches us his will and helps us to follow his will. And, and that's where we've been so far. And, and as we're going into these next, next few verses of the, the following part of the prayer, we need to understand that, that this prayer is not a formula. It's not like Jesus said, well, if you just get all these words right, then God will do whatever you want, you know, and, and that's all you have to do. You know, every day just quote this and that's all you need. But really what this is about is, is that this word pray is to connect with God. To, to be in relationship with God and, to, and just simply spend time with God to enjoy each other and to grow in relationship. And so really what Jesus is doing is he's given us the principles of how we can grow closer to God and how we can experience God in our lives and grow in our relationship with him. And so as we move forward, now Jesus is talking about requests. Okay, request we have of God. The next, next part of the prayer goes, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we also forgive those who trespass against us. And don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, right? And so we're going into these requests. And, and, the, and you know, I've learned in my own life and in talking to people that, that oftentimes... People have a hard time really making requests of God or, or talking to God and, and asking things of Him. Uh, and most of it has to do with their view of God. Who is God and their attitude toward God. And so what Jesus want, wants to teach us here in, in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13, is how we can have the right attitude when we make requests to God. How we can be ready and, and we can realize what God desires of us when we make requests, that he may grant those requests to us. And so here's what, here's what Jesus says about it. In Luke chapter 11 begins verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend... And you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. Hey, how many of you want someone knock on your door at midnight? <laughs> go away! In Jesus' name. <laughs> Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God, we thank you so much for your word and the truth that you teach us through it. 
We thank you for your spirit that speaks to us and, and reveals that truth and, and reminds us of that truth and helps us to incorporate your truth into our lives on a daily basis. And so, God, we pray today that you would speak to each of us, that you would help us to grow and become more like Jesus, and you'd help us to be the people you created us to be. And, in, and through it all, that you'd be honored and glorified, for you are worthy, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And so as we're going through this, we, we're asking this question, how can I pray like Jesus? After all, we're, we're joining the disciples and saying, Lord, teach us to pray, right? So how can I pray like Jesus? And, and today we're focusing on having the right attitude, having the same attitude towards God and towards making requests that Jesus had. And as Jesus is teaching about it here in these, in these verses, one thing that comes out, one thing that keeps being brought up is we need to be persistent in our prayers. We need to be persistent. In other words, we need to keep going. We need to keep praying and, and seeking and keep asking. We need to be persistent. Jesus, Jesus brings this out in this, in this first thing of where he says, you know, you suppose one of you goes to a neighbor it's midnight. You're knocking on the door. Why? Because a friend, someone else has come, and it's mid, even though it's midnight, they've come. And, and in Jewish society, it was disrespectful to not be able to not feed somebody if you invited them into your home, if you allowed them to come into your home. It was disrespectful to them to not feed them. Well, you go, okay, come on in, go to the cupboards, and oh, nothing left to feed them. Well, Joe next door, they always have extra. Always trying to feed all those kids of theirs, you know. And so you go over knocking on the door. But they go, no. We're all in bed. And you got to understand, they didn't have like multiple room houses like we do. When he says the kids are in bed, that means they're probably on mats on the floor in front of the door. All right. And, and so it wasn't just a, oh, you know, I don't want to bother and whatever. But he's saying, I've got to get my, all my kids up and everything. And who knows when those little guys went to bed, right? And, and how many parents realize that, you know, when you wake your kids up in the middle of the night, they just all go right back to sleep, right? No, we're going to have to have all this. And so he's going, hey, no, everybody to sleep, just, just go. But, but, he says, but he says, no, because of your shameless audacity. And actually, that's a poor translation you understand that it, whatever version you're reading it is a translation right but that word that says audacity really is should be translated because of your shameless persistence in other words you're going to stay at the door knocking keep you're not accepting no for an answer it's because of this he will eventually get up and he will come and he will give you what you need all right and many people read that and go, well, that, is that what God's like? We have to wear him down. We have to, we have to get him to, to we have to finally just get him to the point where he's sick of listening to us ask, so he'll finally just say yes and give us what we want. No, that's not what it is. What it is is, is that we need to realize the nature of God and that, and that Jesus is setting up a comparison here. And he's saying, hey, even though it's your neighbor and you guys are probably friends, you've probably helped each other out in the, pl in the planting, in the harvesting, you've, you, you've taken care of each other. He's had times where he's come over asking you for food, you've asked them for food, and you've, you've had this great relationship. Even if your friend, who's this is a good friend, someone who cares about you and you care about, even when, even when they are ones who would say no to you, God is wanting to say yes. Why? Because he's a good, he's a good God. And he loves us. Later on, he, he gives us the comparison of, of fathers, where he says, you know, how many of you, if, if, you, if your son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone, or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion, you know? Uh, how many of you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children? How much more the Father in heaven is going to give good gifts, right? And, and once again, he's given up this comparison. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, that this is really a comparison Thing. It's not that he's saying that we as human fathers are evil, but what he's saying is if you took the best father, in fact, if you took all the best fathers, took all their qualities together, and wrapped them up all in one person, when you compared them to God, they would still seem like they were evil in comparison to God's goodness. When you took all their love, it would seem like hatred in comparison to God's love for us. 
And that's what Jesus is doing. He's saying, hey, you need to know who your father is. You need to understand who you are making requests of. This, this is not some tyrant in the sky who's going, hey, you know what? I, I don't like you. I don't want anything to do with you. Don't even come in my presence or I'm going to just smack you. That's not who he is. He's also not the celestial Santa Claus where if you're just good enough, he'll give you whatever you want. He's also, the other way I've heard him described is, is, is the celestial vending machine. You know, if you get just the right combination of coins or attributes or whatever and put them in the machine, then you can get what you want out of him. That's not who God is. It, God is our loving Father who cares about us. He's our Daddy who wants what's best for us. He, and, and not only does He do that, not only is He good, but He wants to give the best gifts. He wants to give them to us. Because he cares about us and he loves us. And, and that these gifts flow from his character. John tells us in 1 John chapter 4 that God is love. It's not just that he's loving or he does loving things, but he is love. If you go to the very core of who God is, he is love. And everything he does, everything he says, all of his attitude, they all flow out of that love for us. And he cares about us. And so, so when we come to him, we, we have to come to him knowing that he loves us, that he wants what's best for us, and that he longs to give us these great gifts. Well, then the question comes up, well, if that's who God is and he loves us, he cares about us, then why am I not receiving these gifts? Why, don't I, why am I just not overflowing with these gifts that God wants to give to us? Well, James tells us in James chapter 4, in James chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, James, James comes out and he's, he says, listen to this, people. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Listen to this. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. And so James is here and he's going, listen, you're not receiving things. Well, why aren't we receiving this? Because you're not asking God for them. After all, you know, we, we are people and we are taught, you know, that, that we're supposed to take care of ourselves. We're, we're supposed to, you know, we need to be men, except for you women. Let us be men, you know. We need to be men. We need to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We need to, we need to take care of ourselves. Don't, don't be reliant on anybody. You know, you need to take care of yourself. You need to be strong. You need to do all this stuff. And, and we brought that into our relationship with God, too. After all, I mean, how many of you remember that, that wonderful scripture verse, God helps those who help themselves? <laughs> That's not a scripture verse. It's been preached as one. Sounds reasonable, but that, you won't find that anywhere in the Bible. The teaching of the Bible is God helps those who realize their need for God and ask him. Whether it's Jesus earlier on in the Sermon on the Mount where he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That poor in spirit is not the terrible people, but those people who realize that without God, they're bankrupt spiritually. And so they turn to God and say, God, would you help us? Would you touch us? Would you fill us with your spirit? Or, you know, or we, we just see these things going on throughout the scripture, throughout Jesus' teaching, throughout the Bible. God helps those who realize their need for God and turn to him and ask. That's who, he, that's who he helps. I remember reading about a man who, who had a dream one night. And he dreamed that he had died and he was in heaven. And when he was there, he was met by this angel who was showing him around heaven. And, and, and as they were walking through heaven, he saw this huge warehouse. And, and he's going, wow. He says, what is that? And the angel says, that's the warehouse. That's the storehouse for all of God's blessings. And he goes, can I see it? He says, yeah, let's go. And he goes inside, and when they go in, he, he looks around, and he begins to realize that, that it has all of these different areas, and there's names on them with boxes in it. And, 
And he goes, what in the world is that? And the angel says, all those boxes are the blessings God has for that individual. Well, now he's getting kind of excited. He, he runs around, and he, and he gets to his, he finds his name. And there's, a, and there's this bin, and it's just full of these boxes. And, and the guy looks at the angel and says, what, why are, did God not, why didn't God bless me? Why didn't God give me these blessings that he wanted to give me? And the angel looked him in the eye and said, because you never asked. You never asked. And we miss out on so much of what God has for us and, and what he wants to do in and through our lives simply because we do not ask. We get caught up in doing it for ourselves. We get caught up in trying it on our own. We, and, and we miss out on what God has for us. And we need to remember that. Or else, James says, either we don't ask or we ask with wrong motives. When we ask, what do we want to do? We want it for our own pleasures. I want my life to be easier, God, so will you give this to me? Well, God, that looks like fun. But he says it, it's all for ourselves and, and selfishly asked. And he says when we ask selfishly, he says we won't receive it. Why? Because God knows what's best for us. And he's a good father. And so, and so he's not going to give us stuff that's going to harm us or destroy us. Especially if it's going to harm or destroy our relationship with him. Right? You ask for a bread, he's not going to give you a rock. Ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a scorpion, right? Because he's a good father. He's our good daddy. And so when he asks for selfish motives, he knows it's not for our good. It's always interesting to me. I, I run into people, I've run into throughout ministry who have come to me and said, you know what, I keep praying God will help me win the lottery. And I keep telling him if he does, I'll give 50% to the church. Just think of all the money we can give to the church with it, you know. Why doesn't God give it to me? Because he's a good daddy. And he knows that you will probably end up where most people who win the lottery end up. They say 85 to 90 percent are bankrupt within two to three years. Okay? Why? Because they have no idea what to do with it. And so, and and not only that, but he says it goes against my own teaching <laughs> of how to of how to manage and and use money goes against his own teaching so he's not going to so if you're praying for God to help you win the lottery you might as well stop <laughs> all right why because he's a good daddy and he gives good gifts but we tend to be the ones who are in the who are who are the kink in the hose or we're the ones who cause the problem in receiving of those gifts because we don't ask or what we ask for is for selfish reasons but he remains that good daddy who loves us, who cares about us, and desires to pour those out on us. And as we realize that, as, then we can be persistent in our prayers. We can continue to pray. And we can continue to ask. And, and we don't do it with the attitude of, well, we need to coerce God or we need to wear him down. But, but it's more for our benefit that we remember who the gifts are coming from and what's going on. And then once we realize who God is and how good he is and, and what he wants to do and we begin to ask with right motives, then, then we need to remember that we should pray. And when we pray, we should expect results. We should expect results. Why? Because he's a good dad and he's going to answer us. He's a good God, dad and he's going he's to watch out for us. And not only that, God has promised that he will answer. Right? What does Jesus say here? So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's a promise from, out of the very mouth of Jesus on behalf of God to each one of us. That if we are praying and we are seeking him, he says we will receive. God will answer, and we can expect results. 
God has promised it. This isn't the only place where, God has, where Jesus made this promise. Remember when he said, ask for anything in my name and it will be given to you? Anyone who desires, ask the Father for anything in my name, it will be given to them. The Father will do it for you. But we need to understand that, that once again, that's not just a thing of, well, if we say in Jesus' name, it'll happen. But that means according to his will, it will happen. And once again in here, as we look at this, we, we, can, we can look at it and we see these ask, seek, knock. And, and they seem like a one-time thing, right? If you ask just one time, it's going to happen. But in reality, like I said, it's written in Greek, translated to English. Um, the verb, the Greek verb that is used here, and I'm terrible with English in terms, so I'm just going to describe what it means rather than try to give you the, the term for it. But the, but the verb that is used here is a continuous action. Okay, so really what it should say, whoever continues to ask, it will be given to them. Whoever continues to seek, finds. To the one who continues to knock, the door will be opened. And once again, people go, well, wait a minute, what, what, are, you, what are you talking about here? Well, God is calling us to trust in him, to continue to seek him. Because as we ask, we are reminded that the good things come from God, that the good things we have right now, came from God, right? The things we are asking for are going to have to be provided by God. And this continuous action and seeking and knocking reminds us of where it's coming from and who's doing it. And, and because God knows us, he knows if all we, had, all we ever had to do was ask one time and it came, that we'd, that we'd turn it into a formula as humans, wouldn't we? Ask, you get. Ask, you get. You know, we're kind of like Pavlov's dogs. We turn it into a formula. This brings this. This brings this. And, and that's all we do. Rather than remembering the relationship that is desired. But God has promised to do this. In, in another place, Jesus talks about a widow who, is, who her neighbor has has done something unjust towards her and so she's coming to the king seeking justice and Jesus makes this statement about the king the king did not fear God or man had no no care about either one and this widow keeps coming he keeps denying her but she keeps coming back and eventually this king goes wow I don't fear God or man but but you know what I, I'm going to give this woman what she wants why because uh, I don't want her to wear me down and in one place it says I don't want her to kill me okay and, we, and, and Jesus says, so just like that persistent widow, we need to continue to ask God. But once again, this is a comparison thing. It's not like God doesn't want to give us anything good, but, but if this is an evil king is willing to give what is needed, give the justice that is needed, if an evil king will do that, Jesus says, how much more your father, who loves us and who cares about us, is going to make sure we get what we need, and that we're taken care of. He's promised it to us. But we need to be persistent. We need to keep going with it. And we can expect results because it's, it's promised from God. But it does require faith. We have to choose to trust God. We have to choose to trust God. In James 1, verses 6 through 8, this is before that other passage that James wrote, Here's what he says. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Now I understand verse 5. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God. But 6 through 8 is true for anything request we have for God. Anything we desire of God, we have to trust Him. We have to believe in God. We have to trust in God. We have to trust that He is a good dad who's going to do what is best for us, who seeks to give us the best gifts. Because the reality is that, is that God answers us in different ways, doesn't He? The way we like for God to answer is we ask, make a request, and He says, yes, right away, here you go. We like that answer, don't we? Because we go, ah, oh, yeah, and we get to enjoy it. But sometimes we come to God and we say, hey, 
I really want this. And God says, no. But I really think it would be the best for me. And God says, no. We have to trust him that he's our good dad. And he wants what's best for us. And, and he sees something or knows something that we don't know. And he's saying no for a reason. Because he knows it's not what's best for us. So sometimes God says yes, sometimes God says no, and then sometimes God gives the answer that we all hate. Wait a while. Yeah, you can have it, but you've got to wait. And, and we don't like that word. Wait is a four-letter word, right? We're not supposed to use four-letter words. But God says, need to wait. In other words, it is something that's good for you, but something's not quite perfect in the timing yet. Either something in your life that needs to happen, or maybe it's something in someone else's life that needs to happen first. But once again, God sees the big picture. Remember, he's our father, daddy, who art in heaven. He's over all and sees all and knows all. And so he's, he sees the whole picture, and he knows just the right time to say, yeah, now's the time. Now's the time. And we have to choose to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you in this. That whatever answer you give me is what's best for me and for everyone else, what's best for your kingdom. And I'm going to trust you in this. That's one of the reasons why it's, why it's really interesting to me that when, when people come to me and they go, hey, I believe God's called me to do this. And I'll look at it and I'll say, well, can you do it? In other words, do you have all the resources? Do you have all the ability? Do you have all the understanding and, and all the people needed in order to do that? And, and they'll go, yeah, I've got it all. It's, it's all put in place and all this stuff. And I'll look at them and say, then God's not calling you to that. But if they come to me and they go, hey, you know what? I really believe God's calling me to this. I go, well, do you, have, do you have everything, all the resources you need? And they go, well, you know what? We don't have all the money we need. And uh, timing's a little off here. And, you know, we're not sure who all is going to get involved or if we're going to have all the help we need or whatever. I'll go, that's from God. Go for it. And people go, what? I go, yeah. Because God never calls us to something we can do on our own. He always calls us to those, th to those things where we need to rely on him in order to see it happen. And so if we're in a place where we're going, hey, I've got all the resources, I've got all the knowledge, I've got everything that I need, guess what? Your vision is too small. God wants to do something greater. And you're going to have to step out of yourself and trust in him in order to see the greater thing happen as he gets involved, as you allow him to be a part. And God calls us to things that are beyond us. Why? Because he wants us to grow and he wants us to trust in him. Because he knows us as people. If we can do it on our own with our own resources, guess who gets the credit? Right? Look what I did. Because we'll forget that those resources and abilities and stuff were originally given to us by God. And we'll do it on our own. And then we'll get reminded, oh, yeah, God's supposed to be a part of this. So we'll say, okay, God, bless it, please. <laughs> and so he calls us beyond ourselves. Why? So we stay in contact with him. So we stay connected with him. So we keep him involved in what's going on because that is what is best for us. But we have to trust him. We have to trust him. Or we'll never continue to ask. We'll try to do it on our own. Or we'll just give up. The other reason that, that God wants us to be persistent, to keep asking and stuff, is, is because he understands that we are impulsive people. You know? We, we are. We, we'll, be, we'll be watching the TV or we'll be going through the store or something like that and, and we'll see something and go, Wah! Yay! I want it! And they'll tell us how much we need it, right? 
and what all, what all the good things are going to happen when we get it and what, how it's going to improve our lives and you know we're, and so we buy it and we end up with garages full of stuff that we bought that was going to make our lives so much better much of it we never even took out of the box most of the rest that we did take out of the box we couldn't figure out how to use it anyway and the stuff we could figure out, we used it one time and went, wow, that didn't help much, and got rid of it. And what God is calling us to is, you know, it, and Dave Ramsey actually brings this out as well in, in his money management principles, is he says, hey, Dave, what Dave Ramsey says is, if you have something you really want, that's kind of a bigger purchase or whatever, he says, make a list. And put that as your number one priority, he says, and then sit on it for a month. And at the end of the month, come back to it. And if it's still your number one priority and you have the resources, then buy it. But he knows that most often we change day to day or week to week on what's most important to us based on our impulses. And so what God is desiring from us as we are seeking him and asking for him, this persistence actually has to do a lot with, is this really what you want? Is this really what you, what, what you need? He knows our needs, but is this really what you want? Is this really what you think would be best? And we've had a month or a period of time to be in connection with him where he can, where he can reveal to us that yes, this really is, or no, this isn't the, what's best. And so how can I pray like Jesus? We need to be persistent in our prayers. We need to be persistent. How can we be persistent? Number one, realize who God is. He is our loving daddy who cares about us and, and who wants and desires to give the best gifts to us. He wants to. It flows from his character. His character of love. And, and he just can't help himself. But we need to be willing to ask of him. And we need to be willing to ask with without selfish motives, truly seeking what his will is and what he desires. And then we need to expect results. We need to expect that God is truly going to answer and God is really going to move because he's promised it to us. But we need to have the faith that says we're going to trust you, God, that whatever answer you give us and whatever timing you want to do it in, you know what's best. And we're going to trust you in this to see it happen and and we're, going to, and we're going to continue in prayer to seek you and to allow you to mold us and make us that, that you will reveal to us if what we're asking for really is what's best or not for our lives. And as we do that, then, we, then, we get to pray, then we'll pray like Jesus. We'll have the same attitude in prayer that Jesus had and has. So how about it? You ready to pray like Jesus? as he's led us and as he's guided us. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for being with us. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for your continued presence with us, the many ways that you do bless us. And God, we thank you that, that you are intimately involved in us and you know what's best and you see the big picture and you are, you are doing what is best. So God, help us to have the right attitude towards you, to see you as you truly are. Help us to actually ask you for what we need and to trust you God in what in the answers you give us that you may be honored and glorified in and through us in Jesus name we pray amen amen all right I want to invite the worship team to come back up as we continue to worship and to seek God as we take some time to let God speak to us and and as, as we respond to him as he speaks to us and so let's just take this time. We're going to be we're seeing the potter's hand. God is seeking to mold us and make us to be who he created us to be. And as we allow him to do that, then, then we are prepared to be in that relationship and to seek him. And this morning I encourage you in this time as, as we're seeking God and as we're responding to him to, to say, Okay, God, what's my attitude towards you? Is my attitude towards you the same as Jesus? Do I see you as my loving daddy who wants what's best for me? Do I bring you all requests? 
There's nothing too big God can't handle. There's nothing so small he doesn't care about in our lives. Do I bring it all to you? Trusting in you. Do I, do I thank you for what you've given me? Do I acknowledge that, that the good things in my life are from you, my abilities and my skills and the things I have? Do I acknowledge that life itself is from you? Am I trusting you? Am I expecting you to answer and trusting you for whatever answer you give that it isn't the best? Let's take this time and, and just ask of God and say, where am I in my attitude towards you? And then as, as he speaks to you, if he says, hey, your attitude is right where I want it to be, then celebrate that because he's the one who brought you to that place. That's right. And if God reveals something to you that, that you're going, ooh, this is hindering, then I'd encourage you to just say, okay, God, help me with it. He's a good daddy. He wants what's best for you. He's going to help you with it because he knows it's what's best for you. And so let's take this time and, and let's stand together as we sing and as we're singing, if you want to come up to the altars and pray, you're welcome to. If you want to pray right where you are, that's great too. If you want to grab someone beside you and say, hey, would you pray for me? You're welcome to do that. You don't even have to tell them what you're praying about. We're the family. We're lifting each other up. Supporting each other. But we invite you to come as as we sing and as we open ourselves up to God and say, God, would you mold us and make us to be who you created us to be? You are the potter. We are the clay. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure, all of my days are held in your hands, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence. Guiding me by your Holy Spirit, teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your holy calling, set me apart. I know. Love.
God, we thank you once again for being with us. We thank you for your continued love for us, your continued presence with us. We thank you, God, that you know everything about us and you care about us. You're intimately involved in our lives. You're constantly touching us, meeting our needs, and watching over us. And God, we thank you for the many ways you've touched, that you've blessed, that you've healed, that you've provided, that you've guided us, you've protected us, you've watched over us, you've enabled us to do things that we didn't think could happen. You continue, God, to, to mold us and make us to be more and more like Jesus. And God, you continue to, to help us to be the people you created us to be. And God, you're patient with us. You never give up on us. And God, we could just keep listing and listing all the things that you've done and are continuing to do, and we'd never run out. You're constantly at work. In fact, there's so many things you do, we have no idea of what you've done. And so, God, while well, we do not have the words to express it, while well, we don't, couldn't even fathom how much you've done, we do want to stop and say thank you. Thank you so much for all you've done and continue to do in and through our lives. And, God, we thank you that you continue to listen to us. You never grow tired. You call us to be persistent in our prayers and to keep lifting up our needs and requests to you. And so, God, we do that today. We lift up those who are struggling with physical issues today, God, and pray that you would touch them and bring healing to them. God, we thank you that Roland was in our first service today and how you've been touching him. And we see Jim here today, and you're touching him and being with him. And Francis was in our first service as well. And, God, we, we just see your hand at work and... And you're continuing to touch and to heal, and we thank you for that. I got a report that Liz is doing better, and, and that's a great thing. And, but God, there's others who are still struggling, and we pray, God, that you would touch and you would bring healing, that you would work in their lives and continue to draw them near to you, that you'd give doctors and nurses wisdom and understanding and skill to, to help if that's the way you choose. No matter whatever it is, God, we know that you are the great healer. And so we put these people into your hands and we pray for your touch. We pray for your will to be done. We lift up their families to you, God, and pray that you would, you would encourage and you would touch and you would bless them as well. And God, others are struggling with financial things and material things. We pray that you'd, you'd meet their needs as you have promised. God, others have spiritual needs. There may be even some here today or, or watching on Facebook that they haven't begun a relationship with you and, and they need to receive your forgiveness today and accept you to come into their hearts and into their lives and begin that relationship with you that you desire. And God, we pray that that would happen, that people would receive your forgiveness. God, others need to, to grow. We all need to grow in our relationship with you and what you have for us. And so we pray, God, you'd continue to lead us and guide us in that growth that development and help 
give us the faith and the courage to continue to say yes to you and be obedient that we may become who you have created us to be as individuals and as a church and God we lift up our nation to you and as we have elections coming up on Tuesday God we we pray for your will we pray that you would lead and guide us and God we pray for your peace in our hearts in our nation is that we would trust in you that that whatever happens on Tuesday you've got it covered and may we celebrate that we are part of your kingdom and while those things may affect us nothing can destroy us when we're with you and so help us to keep trusting in you and in that God help us to be united together with you and then grow in unity with one another that we promote love, care, and honor to those around us and in our own lives. And that, God, you would, you would show us how we can be part of the solution in our world, whether it's material needs, physical needs, whatever it may be, God, how you want to work in us and through us to be part of that blessing, that you may be honored and glorified. And so, God, we bring ourselves to you, and we commit ourselves to you. We say, whatever you want, God, we are yours. And, God, we pray that you'll continue to help us to, to seek you, to grow in our relationship with you. You continue to make us more like Jesus and help us to live on a daily basis what you desire for us. As you lead us, as you enable us, as you empower us through your spirit. For, God, we love you and we praise you. You are so worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good. He is. Yes, He is all the time. And He loves us. And he cares about us. And He desires revival. He wants us to be changed and revived in our lives with Him. And He wants to see our world revived and brought back to Him. And he's called on us to lead the charge as his people, bringing his love, bringing his spirit in. So let's sing about that and commit ourselves to him, whatever he desires. We're his people, we'll follow him. Let's sing to him. <clears throat> As sure as gold is precious and the honey is sweet, so you love this city and you love this tree. Every child I play in my own front door, every baby lying on the bedroom floor, every dreamer dreaming in their dead end. Every driver driving through the rush hour mall I feel it in my spirit, feel it in my bones We're gonna send revival, bring them all back home For I can hear the thunder in the distance Like a train on the edge of town the burning of your spirit, lay your burdens down, lay your burdens down. From a preacher preaching when the well is dry, to the lost soul searching for a higher high. From a young man working through his hopes and fears to the widow walking through a veil of tears every man and woman every old and young every father's daughter every mother's son I feel it in my spirit feel it in my bones 
we're gonna send revival, bring it all back home. For I can hear the thunder in the distance, like a train on the edge of town. I can feel the burning of your spirit, lay your burdens down. forward throughout the week. May he work within us and through us to bring honor and glory to his name. And we look forward to seeing you back here again next week as we continue to celebrate and worship, allowing him to work in us and through us as he continues to create us to be the people he created us to be. Hope you have a great week. God bless.